I have a confession. I wasn't hugely excited about this trip. I've been to Toronto once before, and to be frank, it didn't make me feel anything. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I was, one could say, indifferent. But the persistent cajoling of former Toronto resident and facial hair enthusiast Will Hunter, who also happens to be my brother, and the near incessant requests from you, our beloved viewer, have forced my hand. I'm here, and I'm going to give Toronto every opportunity to win me over. Toronto. This episode is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, a brand new collection RPG that is free to play. Nearly 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in just three months. And you can see why it's got great graphics, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights, an amazing storyline, and over 400 champions that you can collect and personally customize. Like my personal favorite, this guy right here, because, I mean, I mean, look at him, why wouldn't he be your favorite? And check out the detail, though, on all of these champions that you can pick from. It's really, really incredible. And when I'm in an airport, I love to get stuck into the combat elements of the game, which are just going to blow your mind. And an update is now live with an awesome new loyalty program for new players. You get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days. Can you believe that? 90 days in the game. So it's easy to see why, with nearly 200,000 reviews, Raid has a nearly perfect score in the Play Store. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description below, click on our exclusive links, and you will instantly get 50,000 silver, 50,000, and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey, and I will see you in there. It's sometimes easy to lose Toronto in the shadows of its arguably more famous North American peers. But Toronto's scale should not be underestimated. Let's not forget that a quarter of Canada's entire population lives in Toronto, which makes it the fourth largest city in North America. No, this isn't some parochial backwater. This is a buzzing, substantial international city that more than holds its own against any other city on the continent. Toronto is served by Canada's biggest and busiest airport, Toronto Pearson International, or YYZ, located just 17 miles northwest of the city. Now, there are two terminals. Terminal 1 is home to Air Canada and its Star Alliance colleagues. Terminal 3 is home to One World, Sky Team, Air Transat, WestJet, and other. Now, the more astute of you will have realized, that there's no Terminal 2, because it was destroyed in 2007 and osmosed by Terminal 1, like some brutalist bacterial plague. So that's why there's no Terminal 2. You can get between the terminals and onto the car park using the Link Train, which runs every 48 minutes, 24 hours a day. Once you are through immigration, which if you are unlucky like me, can take several hours, you have a load of options for getting into Toronto itself. The Union Pearson or UP Express train runs from the airport to Union Station in downtown Toronto every 15 minutes. The journey takes just 25 minutes and you can buy your ticket from kiosks right on the platform. Taxis are abundant, but expensive. Expect to pay at least $60, including tip, for a trip to downtown Toronto. Uber is a much cheaper option, nearly half the price of a taxi for the 30 to 40 minute journey into town. You could also be arriving into the wonderful Billy Bishop Airport, an island airport located right next to downtown Toronto. Served almost exclusively by the excellent Porter Airlines, this airport is, quite incredibly, walkable from downtown Toronto in less than two minutes. If you have the chance, fly into here. Toronto is a big city with a lot of people needing to get from A to B. One could reasonably suppose back again. But this is a sensible and pragmatic city, and over the years they have built a sturdy but very popular public transit system. So popular, in fact, that it is the third most used transit system in North America, third only to Mexico City and New York City for sheer number of daily users. 
majority of Toronto's public transport systems are run by the Toronto Transit Commission. The TTC is a multi-network agency of public transport operators, including the subway, buses, light rail, and streetcars. And the whole thing is glued together by these Presto cards. You can get your magical Presto card at any subway station, Go Transit railway station, or hundreds of other vendors across the city. The card itself costs $6, and then you can put as much money on it as you think you'll need for your time here in Toronto. And to use it, just tap it on one of the green readers on the streetcar, the subway, or bus when you board. It's as simple as that. The Presto card can be used in and between all TTC services, as well as on 10 other local and regional public transport providers. You'll also get a discount when you use your Presto card on most transit providers over a cash ticket. A TTC day pass is available for $12.50. It gives you unlimited travel on all TTC services within the City of Toronto, except for Downtown Express buses. You can buy a day pass at subway stations or at TTC fare agents. Unlike its West Coast sister Vancouver, Toronto does have both Uber and Lyft. A variety of services are available and the rides are noticeably cheaper than standard taxi fares. One of Canada's most admirable traits is their willingness to welcome people from all over the world with open arms. Couple that sensible but liberal immigration policy with a strong regional economy and you get one of the most culturally and ethnically diverse cities in the world. Well over 80 ethnic communities have made their home in Toronto and over half the city's residents were born outside Canada. And what's wonderful, and I think relatively unique for a city this size, is how immigrant Torontonians, new and old, have balanced their own sense of ethnic identity with a commitment to community integration. And there's no better place to experience this than St. Lawrence Market in the heart of the city. Kevin Durkee of Culinary Adventure Company is a vocal ambassador for Toronto's culinary prowess. The ultimate bite you have to have in Toronto and the only bite you have to have first here in St. Lawrence Market is? Female. Female bacon, exactly. And I'm only going to let you have it from one spot, okay. which is Carousel Bakery off to the side. It was maybe about a year and a half ago, two years ago, that it became the official dish of Toronto. Right. It's not a tourist trap. It is really about the taste of Toronto right. in the most authentic way. Uh, everyone want one? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Pea meal is um, it, it's an interesting item. People call it Canadian bacon. People call it a cured pork. But it's basically the center loin of the pork. It's the pork chop without the chop. It's lightly brined, and on the outside, it's actually got cornmeal. But in the 19 you know hundreds and the turn of the century, um, pea meal was used. So small green and yellow peas were ground down to sort of pack it and to preserve it. Because what was happening is we had a, a gentleman from the UK living in Canada saw the need of hunger in London and said, okay, we can raise animals and process this meat and ship it and make a lot of money. That gentleman's name was William Davies and really created the industry for pork producing not only in Canada but across North America as well. So what we've got here are the lovely little slices. It's just been gently fried on a little flat top just to uh, bring some heat to it all the way through and there's nothing here. There's no condiments. You don't need anything. If you do want something then a, a little Canadian mustard is the way to go but that salty, you know, delicious bite is the best way. And from Carousel, it's the only spot to get it in Toronto. It's a bold claim, but damn it if he wasn't right. Look how many layers there are. <laughs> That's why it's Toronto's signature dish. So good. What a legacy. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy it. And welcome. To, now you're officially Torontonian. Yeah. Oh my God. I love mustard. You love mustard. Of course you love mustard. We all love mustard. But did you know that 90% of the world's mustard came from Canada? I had no idea. If you're a mustard fan, you can say, oh, Canada, and say thanks very much. <laughs> uh, but Koslix is the first name of, of Canadian mustard produced right here in Toronto. Uh, Anton Koslix was the original family that created this stall in 1948. Another incredible family has continued that legacy on. This is one of our ultimate favorites. This is triple crunch. So you've got these three little mixes of full mustard seeds in here held together with a little bit of Canadian whiskey. Nothing better than that. From maple infused to fig to honey, we move through the varieties, upping the heat as we go. 
There's a little bit of a, a controversy of whether we believe hot garlic is hotter than triple X. So you're gonna try both, okay. and you let me know which one's gonna kind of knock you out a little bit. Okay. Ready? The last two. Straight off the bat, I can tell you that the garlic mustard brings the heat. All right, so right about now is when you're gonna start to feel the heat and the pinch on your nose, just a little bit. But I love that, it's a good burn, <laughs> right? <laughs> it a, and it does not gonna hurt, it's the real mustard. There are no preservatives, there's nothing. Coslix is only making the best, but it's got that really oh, dynamic nice. mustard flavor. Yeah. But it's the triple X that, if I may be so punny, really cuts the mustard. Right? Bang, there right? It is. Well, there it is. Oh, man. It takes a couple of seconds, but it's, it's there. But again, wonderful. Breathe it in, right? Good, I love that. <laughs> and with taste buds truly awakened, it was time to move to cooler territory. One of Canada's best kept culinary secrets seems to be the sheer depth and breadth of wonderful, fresh food it produces. These guys take really great care in making sure that they're sourcing the most sustainable, the most authentic, you know, incredible fish from around the world and making sure that how that fish gets to their cases is done in the most ethical way as possible. First up, a fresh serving of Canadian smoked salmon. When you have gorgeous fish like this coming from Canadian oceans, you don't need it to be covered up with cream cheese and all the other stuff. It needs to be just enjoyed on its absolute own. It's delicious. After this, I'm gonna have to get some more of that. And with their salmon proving to be some of the best I've ever tasted, the oysters are next up to the plate. Where do the oysters come from? So, all Canadian. Uh, there are two big growing regions, the East Coast, well, obviously New Brunswick and um, Prince Edward Island for the most part, and then you will get some coming from the West Coast, uh, from the Vancouver Island area. I prefer East Coast oysters. I find them a little bit more delicate, a little sweeter, more briny and more taste yeah, of the lovely. sea. But the BC ones are delicious, but they're a little chewier, they're a little bit richer and denser. Uh, so you can knock back a lot from uh, the East Coast and you know you might slow down a little bit on the BC version. Cheers to some of the best oysters in the world, served right here in the middle of Toronto. Oysters so good, they even made a convert out of will. And what better, more appropriate way to end a morning of eating than with a traditional cheese course to wrap things up? Canadian cheeses are some of the best in the world and really finding their home again and allowing people to find really delicious innovation. But this particular one is called Avonlea Clothbound Cheddar. And this is actually won uh, top awards around the world for cheddar. And it's coming right out of Prince Edward uh, Island, made by Cow's Creamery, similar to the same guys that were doing the oysters. They are making some incredible product, but this has got that rich, buttery crystallization and the saltiness that you would look for. Um, but it's got a really interesting smell, and we're gonna let you try that in just a sec. Amazing. Being British, it's hard to take someone seriously when they propose a challenger to a good old West Country cheddar, but Kevin's confidence was high. Now my uh, recommendation is not to chew your cheese because your teeth don't have taste buds, so you really want to kind of let it sit on your palate, let it warm up. This is a little cooler than what we would serve it at, uh, but try a little nugget of heaven. It's a beautiful cheddar. Yeah. So it is won almost every award in Canada uh, from a cheddar perspective, and it's done incredibly well on the global stage as well. So we're doing some good work yeah. here in Canada. Wow, that is so good. So it's really, uh, really rich. Yes, and in, in a good way. I knew Canada had good food, but I was absolutely not prepared for the sheer quality that we experienced with Kevin in St. Lawrence Market. The variety, the freshness, the craftsmanship—all world class and worth traveling for. Canada. You gotta shout louder about your incredible food. Unless, that is, you're trying to keep it to yourself. And when it's this good, I can't blame you. This is a city that is wonderfully easy from a money perspective for a few reasons. One, we've been here three days now and I have yet to use cash. Everywhere not only takes your card, debit card, credit card, American Express, almost everywhere, but they have chip and pin, America, sort your life out, and uh, in many cases, limitless tap, which makes the whole thing much, much easier. And we're talking restaurants, shops, bars, even down to the smallest street food cafes and independent bookstores. Secondly, while Canada does have a reputation for being expensive because of the way that the various dollars 
are valued at the moment, it really doesn't feel expensive at all to eat, to get around, and to enjoy yourself. When are we gonna do the rundown? Let's do it. A cup of coffee at one of Koreatown's amazing bakeries will cost around $1.50. Can of Sleeman's at a Toronto Blue Jays game is just ridiculous, but everywhere else you pay about eight bucks for a beer. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay six dollars and oddly specifically nine cents, or around four dollars and fifty cents American. Tipping is a thing here in Canada, and I'm afraid it's much like the US system. Customary and expected, so do it. 12 to 15 percent at standard, 20 percent if you've had a particularly good experience. But where Canada is superior to the United States, other than healthcare, is how you tip. In America, there's a lot of paperwork involved, as we've covered in previous episodes here. It is the perfect match of European style of payment and American style of tipping. When you pay, the machine is brought to you. If you're paying by card, which you almost universally are, and you can choose to pay a percentage of your total as a tip or you specify a dollar amount. It means that if you are mathematically challenged like I am, you just do the percentage, it does the math for you, and you pay the total. So at least tipping is easy here and you have very few excuses not to tip. I was wrong. I was very wrong. I was completely and utterly and unabashedly wrong. And I have absolutely no problem admitting that. This is a fantastic city. I love it. I absolutely love it. It has so much of what I want in a city. A hugely diverse populace who have balanced integration with identity, a thriving food scene, great bookstores, friendly people, and a half decent cup of coffee. I am looking forward to coming back here and being even more wrong than I was before. Toronto, you win, and I am totally okay with that.